Okay, um, we've just been having a blast here. Um, good evening, I'm Terry Yaffe, and welcome to Coach World TV. Tonight, as my guest, I have Charlie Allenson. And Charlie and I actually met about a year or so ago through a mutual friend. And since then, I have really enjoyed spending time with him and talking to him. Amongst his many, many talents and achievements, Charlie has created an amazing workshop called Improving with Improv, How to Think on Your Feet and Look Good Doing It. So, away to you, Charlie. Away to me. Um, I want to know how we can do okay. that. Okay, well, <laughs> um, it, we, we have to start with, I guess, how this whole thing came about. I was uh, studying and training and performing improv comedy uh, at the Upright Citizens Brigade uh, here in New York, which is a very well-known uh, comedy uh, organization. Uh, Amy Poehler from Saturday mm -hmm. Night Live came wow. out of there. Okay. A lot of big names came out of there. And, and, then, there and, 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 and then there was Charlie And then there was me, yeah, which is like, uh, <laughs> I'm right up there with them, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but the interesting thing is, while I was taking these classes, it occurred to me that the skills that I was using in improv uh, mm -hmm. comedy could be applied to business and organizational and corporate learning and development because these days particularly I would guess so absolutely everybody's got to do more with less and critical to making that happen is being able to think more quickly with greater creativity and basically shorten the problem-solving process and improv helps you do that Sounds amazing. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? And especially in today's business world where there's so much challenges and changes taking place, I can only imagine how improv can really help people, especially if you have to think on your feet, um, if you have to think off the cuff. Exactly. Um, that's actually the difference why I, I, I chose improv instead of like stand-up comedy. Okay, stand -up, What's uh, the so, difference? A lot of people don't, don't know the difference. The difference, very simply, is stand-up comedy is like uh, Robin Williams or uh, Chris Rock or uh, you know, Louis Black, where everything is scripted very, very carefully and rehearsed, to, just endlessly rehearsed, mm. and so it, it's completely memorized uh -huh. and it's a theatrical piece, okay. basically. Improv comedy, which is why this works so well in, in, in business and organizational learning and development, is, is based on just spontaneous cues. And because you don't know what the audience is going to give mm -hmm. you, and then you have to build on that. So in the business sector, everything changes from second to second. You have no idea what that next phone call is going to bring, what right. that meeting is going to bring. You can be on a sales call, and somebody will say something, and that will completely throw that script out of your head that you have. Oh, yeah. How do you handle that? Yeah. I, I could have used you years ago when I was in advertising sales. They, and you really had to think on your feet, especially if somebody threw you a curveball. Exactly. And, that, and that's one of the uh, benefits that you get out of this workshop. Because the underlying tenet is the more you are self-aware of how you think, of how you observe mm -hmm. things, how you hear mm -hmm. things, the more self-aware you are, the better you can then channel those uh, senses into reacting more quickly and more responsibly. And uh, for example, one of the one of the things that, that the, ver the very basic basic improv exercise uh, is based on finding common ground so you can move forward and come to some sort of resolution. Okay. Be because if you never can find some meeting ground, nothing will get done. So right. I, I, we can try a quick little yeah, exercise absolutely. here. absolutely. I would love it. The most, the most basic, basic improv exercise is something called yes and. Yes and. Right. And that's based on this. When most people have a conversation okay. or you're on a sales call, mm -hmm. you're being interviewed, uh, you're in a brainstorming session, yeah. you're trying to get some ideas uh -huh. out. If somebody says something that uh, you don't like or you think is dumb, we tend to respond with our egos. That our yes, idea is better. Yes, that's right. We, we all say, yeah, <laughs> yes, but. We all say, yeah, yeah but. but. And by saying, but, that just eradicates the other right. person's idea. It just steamrollers over them, and it makes them feel bad, makes them like, feel discounted, and you have very little hope then of, of, of making a bond sure. with them to try to find something uh, to go forward with. Absolutely. So the yes and forces you, this particular exercise that we do, forces you that no matter what 
your rehearsal partner says, and then you translate that into the business world, whatever that person says to you, you must respond yes and. And the difference is, for example, um, if you say, uh, if, if you would say to me, uh, let's try. Okay, okay, okay. You say something to me, and I'll and I'll and I'll come back okay. with it. Okay. Um, you know, Charlie, I've been thinking about going to London, but the weather is really rainy a lot. Yes, uh, and London is rainy. The historical aspect, though, doesn't count on the weather. Doesn't matter. Yes, and I might agree with you on that. However, or but, I, I, but now there but, you go. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but it's still raining there and cold. If you really love London, you'll go there regardless of the weather. I want to go back at you now for a split second. Okay. okay? Um, and I was doing that just. What just to be annoying. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Just to be, you just to be annoying. Just to be annoying. I, I, I understand you, and, and, and believe me, I understand that. I, you, couldn't, you couldn't fool me for one second, because I know improv. Right. That's okay. I know okay. a little myself. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. What are we doing? Oh, I was going to oh, do yeah, one for you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was so, I was so excited here. Uh, okay. Um, that watch is just unbelievably gaudy and just uh, very unflattering. Yes, and it's big enough to tell the time. There you go. No, that's, but that's a good answer because <laughs> now just for, for, the, for the folks in the, in, the, in the peanut gallery watching, <laughs> we could have easily gotten into uh, a tug of war here about if she says, yeah, but I like it. And I'd say, yeah, but it really sucks. Well, and yeah, what but I it's, was you know. going to say was I don't like anybody telling me about how I dress and what I wear. So immediately my back went up against the wall. Mm -hmm. However, yes, and I decided not to do that. And you could see we could act, if we yes. needed to, we right. could actually go on and have a discussion right. about exactly. that because you turned, and this is really cool, you turned that negative that I had thrown at right. you into a positive that, yes, it's big and it's big enough for me to tell time yes. with. So that's the reason, regardless of whether it's stylish or not. In my eyes, it has a utilitarian value it, to you. It's, and it's, it, it's not big and gaudy. No, I was, just, I, I was just... Uh -huh. And as, as coaches, which I am, um, it's very important. That particular aspect for coaches is very critical, especially when you have a client that is going on and on and on and instead of saying yes but, where you're going to immediately shut them down, the yes and kind of opens the way for a dialogue where they don't feel threatened. That, that, and that's the point. That's exactly yes. correct. Well put. Well Thank said. you. Thank you. You must be a coach. <laughs> okay. There's, <laughs> there, 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 there's, there's so much uh, to improv too that uh, there, there are so many other aspects. One, one of the uh, lesser known aspects, which I think uh, is is really cool uh, shows you how to think in a non-linear fashion okay okay most people think in a linear fashion uh, just going A to B and so if somebody says something to you the knee-jerk answer is the first thing that pops into your head that's uh -huh. that's a very linear answer like uh, for example if I say the word I'm just gonna say a word if I, okay. if, if, if I just say the word it's early in the evening, so let's not have no, anything. No, 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 no. This is, this is okay. This is okay. This is, this, this is okay. <laughs> if I just say the word kiss, if I just say the word kiss, okay. the first word that could conceivably pop into your head would be lips, conceivably. I'm just, I'm just doing okay. it for instance okay. here, okay? Now, that would be the linear answer, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. But when I do it in the workshop, I don't want to hear the linear answer. Mm. I want you to take a half a second and see what the next word would be. And that's the word that I want to hear. Uh, so we could say Hershey's. You could say Hershey's. Mm -hmm. You could also say Gene Simmons right. from the band Kiss. It, that was exactly what I was thinking so there are, of. So there are any number of things. And by, by using that nonlinear pattern, mm -hmm. it allows you to look at something from a completely different angle. Perspective, absolutely. Gives you different perspective, a mm -hmm. new perspective, and allows you to solve a problem from a completely different way. 
or if you're stuck in a rut, it, even if you come back to where you might have been originally, it gives you a whole other path to explore in trying to solve whatever problem you're trying to solve by using nonlinear thinking. So, you use this exercise as well in your workshop. I have endless exercises. <laughs> I know, but this is just yes. another one you add yes. to it. Yes, yes. Unbelievable. So, give us how how this illuminates as far as um, what, what it would do for somebody to, I mean, you, you kind of described it, but right. what it would do for somebody to not look at something linear, um, especially in a business sense, but outside of the box in, in, in their response or their thinking. Okay. Um, sometimes you'll be sitting in, uh, let's say, a committee, uh, or you'll have a, you'll have a team brainstorming mm -hmm. on something, and everybody tends to think, when you, when you, when you get into a, a real tight corporate mm -hmm. environment, it tends to foster a certain kind of thinking. Right. Yes. And everybody Absolutely. goes down the same path. Absolutely. You may think you're, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you know, but you're not, you're not really, right. okay? You're, you're, you're taking a little dog leg here and dog leg here, but you're not really going outside the traditional path. But if you force yourself into, just for a couple of minutes, into a, into a nonlinear mode, you really can look at this from a distance. Okay. And by looking at something from a distance, you can see it in a way that can allow you to solve a problem in a way you never thought possible. And so it gives you just completely new options by doing that. Does that, does that make sense? Absolutely. So, so and, that's, the, and, that's the advantage of doing something like and, that. And that's, <clears throat> that's, that's very interesting, especially today when people do have uh, meetings, everyone wants to make sure that they're all on the same page and kind of going down that same, that everyone thinks, okay, this is what I think they want to hear. And it certainly might not solve the problem. No, because what you're doing is you're trying to be a mind reader, which is always very dangerous uh, because right. you're always trying to think, what do you think the client wants to hear? What do you think my boss wants to mm -hmm. hear? What? And, and if, if that's how you approach stuff, uh, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice, right. you're doing your client a disservice, you're doing the people you're working with a disservice mm -hmm. because you're not really opening up, stretching your mind. Mm -hmm. And only by stretching your mind can you see things in a more useful way. And that's what all of the improv exercises are designed to do. To really, you, you feel the stretching, you actually feel the stretching going on. And so by the end of the workshop, uh, everybody really feels actually exhausted because if, you, if you're not used to thinking right. that hard, exactly, exactly. But they're but everybody's happy because they they've learned some new tools in order to solve problems, to get along with people you may not be getting along with mm -hmm. normally, all of those kind of really useful skills. Because we all exercise, we, we all go to the gym, we all go, you know, we exercise our body, or we all try to exercise mm -hmm. our body, not always successfully, but yeah. but we very rarely take the time yeah. to flex the muscle right. up yeah, here. Exactly, exactly. And that's another reason that the uh, the improv workshop, Improving with Improv, is is useful because it really, really stretches this this invisible muscle up here in the in the brain. And when you work with clients, which are businesses, organizations, entrepreneurs, whomever it is, I'm imagining that part of the purpose of doing the workshop is to have the people that work with them for the company really start to, to open the lens and stretch right. so that they can come from whatever challenges are going on today with a very different perspective. That's exactly correct. It, it, it gives you an extra couple of set of tools Say a lot of tools, not just the. Okay, it gives, it gives you. It gives you I, I, I hate using these 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 cheesy analogies of toolboxes oh. and stuff because they're cheesy. I don't like being cheesy, but okay, you got this toolbox. <laughs> okay. All right, you, fin you finish. Be cheesy. You, you, you finish. You finish the my the, the, the my improv workshop, okay. and you and you got this gigantic toolbox. Okay. Craftsman tools. Yeah, okay. A, okay. And um, each each exercise in the workshop is designed to address a specific work-related issue. So by the time you're done, you will know what it feels like to be stuck when you have to keep going. And mm -hmm. by knowing what that feels like, you can be prepared to push on through. Mm 